The Special Anti-Robbery Squad, SARS, is a branch of the Nigerian Police Force. The police department was founded in 1992 and was created as a face mask wearing police unit that performs undercover operations against crimes associated with armed robbery, car snatching, kidnapping, cattle rustling, and crimes associated with firearms. SARS had been accused of several human rights violations, failure to socially distance, illegal stop and searches, illegal arrests and detentions, extrajudicial killings, sexual harassment of women, and brutalizing many young Nigerians. The human rights abuses were documented in trending videos on social media. So in the mid-1990s, the SARS Lagos branch arrested two security guards at their place of work under suspicion of assisting a robbery. The two guards were not charged with the crime when arrested. In 1997, the bodies of the guards were placed at a morgue without an explanation for their deaths. In 2005, a SARS operative killed a bus driver for failing to pay the operative a bribe. The operative was removed from their SARS position and arrested and charged with murder. In 2010, Amnesty International declared that it would be suing the Nigerian police over human rights abuses, stating that they arrested three bicyclists and detained them for over one week while they were beaten every night with the butt of a gun and an iron belt. That same month, a federal high court ordered the then Inspector General of the Police to produce a special anti-robbery squad officer who had shot and killed a 15-year-old boy at his high school. According to the SARS officer, the team was mistaken for a kidnapper. Later in July of 2010, Sahara reporters published an extensive editorial report detailing how SARS and other police units had made a profit of $9.35 billion from roadblocks and extortion within 18 months. So that's just a few of the many incidents reported over the years. This SARS unit has been a problem for the Nigerian people and their family for a very long time. The Amnesty International's 2016 report stated that SARS was indicted and responsible for human abuse, cruelty, degrading treatment for Nigerians in their custody, and other widespread torture. Some of the human rights abuses by SARS include the shooting of their detainees in the leg, mock or threats of execution, hanging, and severe beating. Back in 2017, Nigerian activists and youth took to the streets and social media to protest against police brutality using the hashtag NSARS. A 2020 publication by the organization indicated that between January of 2017 and May of 2020, they had documented 82 cases of abuse and extrajudicial killings by SARS. Nigerians shared both stories and video evidence of how members of SARS engaged in kidnapping, murder, theft, rape, torture, unlawful arrest, humiliation, unlawful detention, extrajudicial killings, and extortion in Nigeria. SARS officers had been alleged to profile youth based on if they had dreadlocks, cars, expensive phones, and risque means of expression. SARS operatives mounted illegal roadblocks and searches, conduct unwarranted temperature checks, arrest without warrant, rape women and extort young Nigerians for driving exotic vehicles and using iPhones. So in the beginning of October 2020, a video started trending on social media showing a SARS police officers shoot a Nigerian man in front of a wetland hotel. It was alleged that the police officers took away the man's vehicle, a Lexus SUV. The training video caused public outcry on social media, especially on Twitter, with the NSARS hashtag attending. Justice as NSARS train began on Twitter on October 5, 2020. Another report of SARS officer killing a 20-year-old up-and-coming musician popularly known as Sleek in his neighborhood. They must leave us. They must give 
give us justice. Look at them. Military, they up the light. They up the light, yeah. They surrounded us. Today. So Sleek was said to be sitting in front of a hotel with a friend when the SARS men approached them. They immediately took to their knees. It was reported that they were double-crossed by the SARS men and Sleek was shot four times as he died on the spot. His friend was arrested. On October 8th, October 2020, nationwide protests on end SARS started after weeks of outcry and anger with videos and pictures showing police brutality, harassment, and extortion in Nigeria. The protests were led predominantly by young Nigerians in different cities alongside many activists and celebrities. Nigerian police force disrupted the protests in some cities, throwing tear gas and shooting at unarmed peaceful protesters. This led to the death of Jimo Isaac. By October 14, 2020, the NSARS protests were still ongoing with young people in different parts of Nigeria intensifying their calls for reform and accountability in police operations. In response to the public outcry on the police brutality, the Inspector General of Nigerian Police banned SARS and other tactical units from mounting roadblocks, checkpoints, stop and search, and other routine and patrols. But similar bans have been announced multiple times over the past four years, causing citizens of Nigeria to question whether the bans would actually be upheld. There were more reports of SARS officers involved in killings across the country. This was the fourth time that the Nigerian government called for a ban on SARS activity with no resolve, so the protesters are insisting that the whole police unit be abolished for good. On October 11th, just days since the protests began, some thought that their voices had finally been heard as the Nigerian police force announced that it was dissolving SARS. But just one day prior, it was reported that the military's head of state, President Mohamed Buhari, gave the orders to open fire on peaceful protesters at the Lake toll gates in Lagos. On October 20th, as things continued to escalate, the governor of Lagos State declared a 24-hour curfew on the state. During this time, pictures of some persons alleged to be working with the Lagos State government and the Lakey Concession Company reportedly moved the CCTV cameras at the toll gate circulating on NSARS on Twitter. A few hours later, it was reported that the armed men of the Nigerian army arrived at the protest ground and opened fire on peaceful and unarmed protesters, killing about 20 people. Guys, they're shooting at protesters right now. They're in total darkness. They've turned off the screen. Protesters are in darkness and they're shooting. Somebody has been killed. They're shooting now. Tag everybody that you can tag, please. At least 50 other people were injured. Citizens also posted videos saying the ambulances were ordered to not give the much needed medical attention to the people who needed it. I got talk, talk, talk. I'm not going to do anything. I'm not allowed to pass. I'm not allowed to do anything. I'm not allowed to do anything. I'm not allowed to pass. I'm not allowed to pass. You see, I'm not allowed to pass to go save lives. So on October 11, 2020, the protesters put up five demands to be met by the federal government of Nigeria. The demands were signed by the Nigerian youth, and they asked for the immediate release of all arrested during the protests, as well as justice and compensation for all who died through police brutality in Nigeria. They also demanded that the independent body be set up within 10 days to investigate and prosecute all reports of misconduct. The protesters also asked for a psychological evaluation and retraining of SARS operatives before they are deployed to any other police unit, which makes a lot of sense. So lastly, they asked for adequate remuneration for Nigerian police. There have been international demonstrations in solidarity within the country, which is huge because the citizens put their differences aside for a common goal. 
So the citizens of Nigeria have had enough and have been peacefully protesting in efforts to bring reform and an end to police corruption. And this corrupt regime has been responding to complaints about police brutality with more police brutality. Sounds familiar. So police brutality is a global issue. I hope that this ends with some resolve and that no more lives are senselessly taken. It is very disheartening and my prayers do go out to our brothers and sisters in Nigeria. Between the gruesome images of people who were killed, the people who've been hurt, and the desperation in the voices of the people that were crying for help, I was really taken aback. However, I'm not the type to shy away from harsh realities and pretend like it doesn't matter because it's not happening directly to me. I always say to be aware is to be alive, and I just wanted to do my due diligence to bring some awareness to what's been happening in Nigeria and share with you guys some of what I learned doing my own research. So that is all for now, and I'm going to end this with a quote by Nelson Mandela, and it says, After climbing a great hill, one only finds that there are many more hills to climb. So with that being said, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And most importantly, you guys, remember to stay safe, stay aware, stay blessed, and stay in tune. Until next time, take care.